Hello everybody and welcome back to the animation of Kingdom Hearts. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the animation in Kingdom Hearts. I lied last time, I said we were gonna play something else. Still Kingdom Hearts, we're gonna do this a little bit longer. So, we are actually gonna be playing something else very soon. In fact, right after I finish recording this, I am going to record that next game. And uh, that's gonna be pretty fun because I uh, had the idea to... I guess, I, spoilers, I guess, but... I had the idea to start talking about the 12 principles of animation across this animation series of videos. So, once we start into that next game, for that game and the next 12 games afterward, we're gonna start off by talking about the principles of animation and then it'll be fun. But until then, let's play a little bit more Kingdom Hearts because, because you guys seemed to enjoy Kingdom Hearts and because you had some really good questions that I think I can try to answer as we play. And I think we can get a little bit further in and maybe at least see some Final Fantasy characters, if not some more Disney ones. So, uh, yeah, let's keep going in this. Yeah, we didn't really talk about the animation of the enemies last time. The Heartless have a really interesting kind of body language. It, I, I hesitate to even really call it body language because it doesn't communicate much. It's actually just very irregular and twitchy and unpredictable. Kind of like how certain uh, creatures and animals, like if you don't know their kind of body language and how to interpret it, how unpredictable some of them can seem. This seems like that kind of cranked up to 11. And actually, the different types of Heartless all have not necessarily radically different ways of moving, but they do have their own move sets and their own attacks and their own things that they can do. Like these really basic Heartless here can do that sort of a flattening down thing where they're like, I can't hit them when they're in that flattened down state, but you can still see them kind of animating and moving. It's, it's pretty clever. I wonder how they did that. I mean, it seems like they just kind of scaled them down completely flat while still allowing their other animations to play. I wonder if that's something that they layered over the animations that the animators built, or if they had to do some weird fancy thing in the rig to allow them to flatten down like that. Probably the latter, that would be my guess, but I actually have no idea. You know, I have a hard time remembering exactly what my objective was. Like, Pluto ran off. I guess we're just exploring now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we're supposed to meet up with Donald and Goofy, but we keep missing each other. Now I remember. So, as long as we're running around, uh, thank you all for your, uh, recommendations for games that I should be playing on this series. I've got a lot of them now, and, uh, definitely lots to work with. And you guys have suggested some good ones. Some of those suggested ones will be happening soon. Uh, in fact, the next one I plan to record is one that has been requested numerous times. So, uh, yeah, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. That'll be fun. And also... Thank you all for your recommendations for <laughs> titles for this show, which I don't really have much... Yeah, like, the only title I've really got for it is the animation of... insert game title. Which is not a very good name. I mean, it's descriptive. Not very catchy. But I guess I'll keep it until I think of something better. A lot of people are fans of... Danimate, or Danimation, or something like that, which... For some reason I'm opposed to, which I don't know why. I mean, that's a perfectly clever, fun little name. Maybe it's because our uh, extra credit staff shorthand for the pose animation of little cartoon me at the podium is what we usually call that Danimation, just because everyone on staff knows what it means, <laughs> but it's not really that much of animation, but anyway. But yeah, I don't know, maybe that'll be the name. I'm still kind of thinking about it. You guys had some clever names, though. I do appreciate all the help you've offered. You know, I'm not sure why there's a shrine to, uh... Lady and the Tramp here in the middle of Traverse Town, but... It's cute. I like it. But as long as we're playing some more Kingdom Hearts, you guys actually made some pretty great observations uh, in the comments based on stuff that I've been bringing up and talking about. Uh, including the way Sora opens chests. Uh, if some of you mentioned, and I think accurately, that the reason... Okay, I guess that's locked. 
that the reason that uh, Sora opens chests the way he does by lightly tapping on it is that usually he is holding the Keyblade. And the Keyblade is a magical thing that can open all manner of locks, so really he just has to tap a chest with the Keyblade and boing, it just opens on its own. Which, yes, I think that is exactly what they had in mind when they animated it this way, so good observation, you guys. Also, there were some good observations as to um, Sora's design and the design of and the redesigns of a lot of Final Fantasy characters to make them fit in this Kingdom Hearts world where they may have to stand next to Disney characters who often look quite different. Uh, one thing that I hadn't really brought up when I was talking about that was color. And some of you, I forgive me, I don't remember everyone's name who brought this up, but some of you observed that Kingdom Hearts in general is a much more colorful world than Final Fantasy games. And that is true. So if you look at a lot of the Final Fantasy characters' designs, and Sora's as well, You'll see a lot of really bright colors. You get really bright reds, bright yellows, and blues. And uh, all the Final Fantasy characters that you see will, I'm willing to bet, for the most part, have much brighter, more saturated versions of their clothing's colors. And another interesting thing about Sora's design related to color. Looking at his color scheme here, with the uh, red pants and, and shirt, Big yellow shoes, black hoodie, uh, white gloves, mostly. What character does he resemble most? What Disney character does he resemble most? If someone brought this up, and they're totally right, his color scheme is designed after Mickey Mouse's. He's got the big yellow shoes. Does he have buttons? Does he have big yellow buttons? Eh, I don't see any yellow buttons, but that's okay. He has the big yellow shoes. He's got the red pants. If he wore his hood, his head would be black colored. He looks primarily like a Final Fantasy character, but in his costume design, he is definitely built to look sort of familiar in a Mickey Mouse sort of way. I think that's great. And good o another good observation, you guys. Well done. And I did mention a couple episodes ago, uh, the low-res and high-res versions of characters' faces for animation. These are apparently Donald and Goofy's. Which I don't know if it is actually a different model, I suspect it is, because there's just too much benefit to having a lower res version of their faces, but you'll notice, not a lot of movement, not a lot of animation, just blinks. I've actually been, over the last year or so, re-watching all of the Disney animated films in chronological order, which I mostly did uh, because I was helping a friend of mine, Alex Shaw, record a podcast, a series of podcasts, uh, for his show, which at the time was called Digital Drift. I think it is now called School of Movies, but uh, a lot of those have come out if you guys want to listen to them, by the way. I'll put a link somewhere in the description if I remember to. Anyway, I was watching all the Disney films in chronological order, which is really fun, actually. It's really interesting seeing the progression of the medium like as you go, like seeing what things the animators learned, seeing like, how their... Uh, and seeing how their understanding of animated filmmaking progresses over time, and seeing the big leaps that happen with uh, technological innovations. Oh, it's really interesting. I recommend it if uh, any of you guys are Disney fans and you want to enjoy a little animation history while you rewatch a bunch of fun movies. Where am I supposed to head next? I don't exactly love this, um... Ah, so they can open their mouths in their low-res face version, but they can't do all of their, uh... Their pupils can't really move. Their, uh... Eyelids and brows and stuff like that won't move much either. They won't see a lot of expression. Yeah, interesting. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of this little stretch of the game here where you're mostly supposed to wander aimlessly... Uh, by design, not finding anybody but you're supposed to do it in the kind of right order so that you go through specific doors that trigger scenes where you are not finding Donald and Goofy. Like, it's... I don't know. It just feels a little aimless. I just now realized Sora actually has two different animations for opening doors, or at least two of them. It never really occurred to me that he has an animation for opening double doors and an animation for opening single doors. Yeah, nice little attention to detail. I'm trying to think of something interesting to say about Sora's attack animations, but <laughs> it's hard coming up with something better than I like them, they look nice. 
I do really like how the uh, attack animations combo together really nicely, and how uh, attention is paid to like leg work. Where am I supposed to go? This always happens every time I get to this part of the game. I forget which specific door I'm supposed to walk through that doesn't actually take me to... It doesn't actually lead me to the characters I'm trying to find or talk to, but it's just the door I was supposed to walk through, I guess. Do 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 do. No, maybe I'm supposed to go up here. There we go. Hey, you really just have to walk through the right doors in the right order, huh? That's a little annoying. That's okay. Gives me more time to talk about stuff. Oh, which reminds me. So, last episode, at the very end, I uh, brought up Lip Sync and uh, kind of wondered aloud if perhaps the uh, animators at Square had animated the lip sync to the English dialogue instead of the Japanese, since that's what it kind of looked like. As some of you have informed me, they actually animated the lip sync to both the Japanese and the English dialogue, which explains it, but is also quite impressive because... For those of you who aren't animators, lip sync is incredibly tedious to animate. It's just, there's a lot of muscles in the face, there's a... Oh, I can't climb it, I guess. But animating all of that intricate lip and tongue and jaw movement to uh, animate speech is really tedious and takes a long time, and every single word and every single phoneme part of the word it just takes forever, and it's really tedious and annoying. So the fact that they did that by hand for both Japanese and English dialogue for all of the uh, scenes in this game that have the high-res faces, it's a lot of work. And I wonder if in later games they have automated some of that process somewhat. Because nowadays we do have some kind of procedural automatic lip-sync tools. Like, if you play big, long games like Mass Effect or The Witcher or whatever, for all of those cutscenes and all of those long dialogue trees, they did not animate all of that lip-sync by hand. No way. That's hours upon hours upon hours. It would just... gosh, it would take forever. And it would be prohibitively expensive, too. So what they have instead is a uh, essentially a tool or a program that will that will look at the audio for the dialogue and generate that lip sync animation automatically. And it won't be perfect, but these days they've got it to where it's close enough. But it's definitely better than nothing, especially in a scenario where you really can't realistically animate all of it by hand. I wonder if modern Final Fantasy games and modern Square games have made use of that at all, because they do localize these games into a lot of different languages now, I expect. I mean, I assume that like Final Fantasy 13, for example, or 15, have recorded dialogue in more languages than just English and Japanese. I assume, right? Like, like German or Italian or French. I mean, like, there must be other languages, I would assume, that they have voice actors for. And they, again, I would assume, can't realistically, or at least not without spending a whole lot of money, hand animate the dialogue for all of the cutscenes in all of the languages. That's just... Ugh, I would not want to have to animate all that. I wonder. Some of you guys might know. If you do know this, let me know, because I'm actually very curious about that. And that'll be useful information for when I eventually play all the Final Fantasy games on this. Which is something that I would totally love to do. Eventually, I'm going to play through all of the Final Fantasy numbered games on this series. Maybe in chronological order. That would actually be pretty fun. We'll get to that. I've got to find the right place to go to run into Donald and Goofy. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip ahead to when I've walked through the right door. Excuse me. What? They'll come at you out of nowhere. The answer was to go back to the shop and then walk and out? Keep on coming at you. As long as you continue to wield the keyboard. Well, here's a Final Fantasy character, I guess. But why? Why would it choose a kid like you? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Never mind. Now, let's see that Keyblade. What? There's no way you're getting this. All right. Then have it your way. Oh, geez. 
So this isn't the first Final Fantasy character we've run into, but... I wonder if I can beat him. I can't remember if this is a fight you're allowed to win. <laughs> I wonder if I can hit that fire back at him. I can't remember if that's the thing I'm allowed to do. Ooh! Ah! Stop it! He's got a very bored, disinterested-looking walk cycle. Which I suppose is in character. Ah! It's interesting that they chose to age him up a little bit for this. But it's not necessarily applied across the board to all the Final Fantasy characters that, that I can tell. I mean, some of them are aged down. You got Titus and Waka and Selfie back in Destiny Islands, and they're like 10. Ah, stop it. Hey, I won! No way. Didn't know that was possible. Cool. I notice he doesn't have a high-res face. He's all low-res. I guess because they don't get a whole lot of use out of him, so there's... <laughs> okay. Oh, you're slipping, Leon. I went easy on him. Looks like things are worse than we thought. A lot worse. Yeah, it looks like for the secondary characters who don't get a whole lot of, uh, screen time in the game, rather than modeling out and rigging fully, uh, high-res animatable faces, they've just added a few more, uh, 2D texture frames just to get a little bit more versatility, like eyes looking to the left, like eyes looking to the side, a couple more expressions. Not a full high-res face like this one, though. I forgot they added scenes like this to the Final Mix version. This is the um, PS3 HD re-release, by the way. Which I'm playing partly because it looks a little nicer and it's widescreen and all that, but also because they're, the animation is pretty much unchanged. They've got some higher res textures and whatnot, but the animation is pretty much the same. So, alright, I'm gonna go ahead and call this an episode, and we will come back next time and watch the rest of these cutscenes. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Kingdom Hearts animation next time.